Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the sound of uh, Zebra 2, uh, which is uh, actually what we're looking at is the collection. So this is the Zebra Legacy collection. This is what I've just installed uh, from Yuhi. In fact... <clears throat> Zebra Legacy gives you all the sounds, Zebra 2 and all the sounds. It's currently on offer. Uh, what they also do is they've tweaked a lot of the patches, pretty much all of the factory patches, uh, to now use NKS, so you can get the sound set uh, in NKS. There's also uh, uh, some new features in 2.9. You get all factory presets, obviously. And another one is support for odd sound MTS ESP, which is actually, uh, as far as I'm aware, something to do with... Um, microtonal sort of scaling and stuff, which I don't really use, but I know a lot of people are really into that. So the thing about the Zebra Legacy Collection, it's been out for a little while. It's on offer. It's 99 euros. It's actually a fairly reasonable deal. When you get 4,000 or so patches, but you also get Zebra HZ, which is Hans Zimmer version, which is an enhanced version of Zebra. Uh, uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. In the meantime... So we'll just go to presets here. What I've done, actually, I mean, here are all of the patches. There are a ton of them. Like I say, I don't know how many there are. I mean, hundreds and hundreds. Uh, and it's quite hard to find. So what I, all presets, 4,003 we've got there. So what I actually did is I went through and I favorited um, a bunch of them, the ones with these little dots here. And then I put those all in MIDI programs. Now, those of you who don't know, um, to change programs in Zebra, what you have to do is you drag programs into here. So that means that now I can use uh, the, the nifty feature of my program change stuff, which is in the in this M Audio uh, Axiom keyboard. Let's start with zero, and I can just press or minus programs through here. There is a little bit of an, uh, a weird uh, thing going on, though. If I go to the page here, you can see that what's updating is just the add-on, just the preset info, not the description or anything, which is kind of a shame because it would be really handy. If I want to do that, I have to click on it and it gives me all the description. But these notes are really handy because it gives you the sort of notes for cutoff and tone. So, for instance, in this patch, uh, which is Add On Loop by Big Tone. One thing that I will say about Zebra, Zebra is, I think it was first released in 2003. It's been around a long time. And as we know, Yuhi synthesizers are really well thought of in terms of sound. And I've looked at Hive and I've looked at a bit of Diva, uh, but the sound of Zebra, it's its massive. It's really interesting. I know a lot of people swear by uh, the Yuhi sound, but I've not really explored much of this before. And it really is very impressive. So let's go through, let's do another couple of patches because I could just do it with the up and down keys on my keyboard, which is okay, but it means that we get, we get the, uh, um, the notes as well. So this one is just a really good sounding kick drum. Moves a lot of air. That's all it is, a kick drum. Nice, that works fine for me. So let's, uh, let's through. Black Magic, this is uh, by Vincenzo Bellanova. That's kind of cool, isn't it? So let's go to uh, full screen of that, have a look at the synthesis. There's quite a lot going on in here. We can mute the effects. Yeah, there's quite a lot of effects on that guy, obviously. Okay, back to presets. Let's have a look at this guy. This is a beautiful bass sound. And I've got... It's got a really nice legato mode and another really nice feature. You can set the pitch bend to be different in different directions, which is just a really cool feature. Buzzsaw, this is by Michael Kastrup. Um. 
very jump, isn't it? Shall I? Shall I? What do you think? Yeah, I can't. Actually, I don't know if I know jump, so I'm, that's I'm going to use that in my defence. I didn't do it because I don't know how. Let's have another look at a couple more. This can do loops. This is uh, big tone again. Darker bass, pitch bend up, high pass. Could be useful for a couple of things. There's some really nice, just regular keyboard sounds in here. Simple and mellow. Yep, I'd agree with that. Vincenzo Bellanova. Again, sounds like some FM going on in that one. We could probably figure that out. Yeah, FM oscillator one, yeah. Does look like it. There are a lot of presets in here, and these are the ones I've just favorited. Uh, so let's just go to the next one down. Favourite of Velocity Sensitive, what more can I say? Lovely effects in here as well. This is a great little bass sound as well. Something about the snappiness of that uh, those envelopes and the kind of there's there's a there's a variance, so it's not it sort of doesn't sound the same every time, and really velocity sensitive. I don't think it does much other than that. Really simple. So this is just one oscillator. Really like the legato pitch on the, the legato tone on that one. Nice, uh, big tone. Let's have a look. We've got some Howard Scott, Michael Cavallo, some good. Yeah, kind of wah funk could be useful. 90s organ sound, party house organ bass. Yeah, useful. And again, there's a lot of thump in this. I'm listening on, I've got a pair, I've just got, literally just arrived, I bought the IK Multimedia MTM, the little desktop ones, um, after reviewing the iLoud Precisions, which are massive um, and expensive, but sounded great. I, I just haven't got a space for them, but they sound just so, there's a bit more low end. I'm getting low end here. Another one of Howard Scars. Really good things with that. Uh, with those. Just a massive synth sound. This is Robbie the Robot. This is kind of 1950s space. There's a vision in the 
in the water in some kind of cave on the moon. And the, and the camera's doing that thing. But then... <coughs> not quite sure what that does. Howard also does some really nice played. stuff which just has really delightful velocity curves because that's all programmable on this thing this is whom and i understand why it'd be called that wow that is so bassy incredible Okay, we've got a low more Howard, Howard Scar. I'll, I'll do a couple more. This is an interesting one because it's called Zebra Speak. <laughs> and it does. And it does say zebra. Here's an organ sound uh, by Big Tone. Nice, nice percussive, not bad for a synth. This one's lovely, this is uh, Jean-Michel Jarre Faisalina, so you can imagine where this is coming from. This has got a real... this one by Big Tone. And we got Swell on the aftertouch. Yeah, good. And now these, these are interesting. These are some from uh, Alexander Hack. Now, Alexander Hack, um, or Hacker, um, I, I'm sure I reviewed uh, drones by Orchestral uh, Tools, and he's the guy who's uh, done. I think it was in Einstein Neubarten. I know I've pronounced that wrong, but he makes some very interesting and unusual sounds. I wonder if we've got any more of these. Actually, these are all in this bank here, which is New York City. Um, so. Yeah, I used a few of these, some really massive ones. So these these got really interesting notes. A tonal patch for adventurous sonic experimentation. Let's use the XY pad for... Yeah, Alexander Hack is the guy who did those kind of drones. But he does some really uh, description. The Issue Project Room is New York's premier location for experimental arts and performance, currently located at Third... I think his series is based on locations in New York. It's uh, very curious. Now, um... Let's see, there are some in here. I know there were some... Uh, some really... Below the Belly of the Beast. This was a good one. Let's bring that up level. I think this was the one I opened with. And I've... I've um, these are mapped to Control A, which is uh, CC2 and CC11. So that adds reverb. Some great ones in here. Anyway, uh, I should probably go back to my favourites because there's a... Another big tone patch. It's got a bit of vinyl noise in it. Here's one from Howard Scar again. 
Howard's kind of one of the earliest sound designers. He did loads of stuff for Axis Virus. So he's been doing sound design for a long time. In fact, he's done a lot of work with ha Hans Zimmer. And in fact, was kind of quite instrumental on getting the... Uh, the, the Dark Knight sound set and programming a lot of that stuff and then that being released as a separate thing. In fact, we should probably look at that now because it would make most of sense. So I'm just going to switch that off. Let's go to the, the main page. We'll just I'm running this in Reaper uh, VST3 on an M1 Mac. Uh, this is a um, 16 gigs with uh, M1, basically. So if I just bring this one in, this is... Now, this has got some differences. What's going on here... I should probably read this because I'm not going to remember everything. Uh, Zebra um, HZ, or Hans Zimmer, this was released in 2012, and it had eight extra filters, four high-pass and four low-pass, based on Diva models, four comb models, modules instead of two, eight um, envelopes instead of four, 24 modulation metrics instead of 12, XY pads also appear as regular modulation sources, four polyphonic compressors, and three polyphonic... Polymoog style resonators. So this is actually a modified um, synthesizer. And as such, the patches in here will not load in Zebra 2. But if we go to the browse, the, all of the banks that are in Zebra 2 will load in Zebra HZ. And this comes as part of the collection. If I go back to my uh, main page here, this is all part of this uh, Zebra 2, Zebra Legacy, which is Zebra 2 and all the sounds, including Zebra HZ, because you use the same serial number. 99 euros seems like a fairly reasonable uh, thing just for all that many sounds, let alone everything else. Right, let's go back to... These are... very atmospheric. Oh, I should go to best of uh, Dark Zebra best of. It's probably the best of. A lot of these are programmed by Howard, Scar and Hans Zimmer. And they're very atmospheric, very cinematic. Some really lovely stuff in here. You get lost in this for ages. Very dreamy, isn't it? This reminds me, so basically we've got a whiteout scene in space with maybe the edge of a planet. Or maybe it's a sort of desert space scene and over the hills come these kind of floaty... They look initially beautiful, but they're actually a bit weird. Anyway, I get lost in this for ages. Let's bring a couple more up. Okay, so. stuff going on here. Batcave, sinking down. This might be an actual use. Not all of these were used in the Dark Knight, but some of them were. So maybe this is a Batcave theme. Batflaps performer. I mean, I've got to try this, right? <laughs> some practice. Uh, I guess this is the idea of this is sort of the flapping cape, maybe? I'm guessing. Lovely, 
got a real there's a real sort of sense of analog warmth here and i guess you know this isn't i mean it's not massively hungry on the cpu and this is an m1 so it's not going to be taxing it too much this is one percent let's try a couple more uh i've got a highlight this 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 is actually one thing that's kind of annoying i'll show you this because essentially if you want to do uh program changes what you have to do is you have to drop uh things in midi programs so i've got midi programs here so so these uh in that bank so i'm able to to do that you have to drop them in there but they don't really it, that's the only way, really, you can, I can have hardware control of patch flipping. It's only the patches that I'm dropping in that, which is fine. But, you know, just, just for, like, looking Dark Zebra the best of, I sort of have to go back here and I can use my up and down arrows on the keyboard. What I would really like to see, please, will someone do it, is this, is make these, these patch left and patch right, which will just go in whatever bank you're in can you we have those be midi assignable please that would be really nice just make it so that the, on all plugins because then it becomes a norm and for reviewers it makes it a lot easier i tell you okay interesting see if I uh, let me quickly do a MIDI learn here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, you're probably not going to see this if I go to this one I'll just go into settings and go into learn mode I want to set the output and I want to do that knob there that gives me control over the volume so I'll just come out of here close now I've got volume control yeah that makes it a bit better so then I can go back Tension clocks, push push the mod wheel. I can see how that will work. Yeah, no useful useful uh, sonic signature. reverb yeah some nice stuff in here mm, nice metal spank that sounds like it's going to be interesting Interesting. Such a complex patch. Again, a lot of Howard Scar's programming has a, an incredible amount of... ...sensitivity. This is just a sort of regular but nice sounding... Well, it's virus, I guess, maybe inspired by some access virus action. sound from Batman Begins. Well, there we go. That's what it that's what it says. So that must be true.
This one I favorited, so it must be doing something nice. Interesting. So as I add aftertouch, it increases the glide rate. That will take some practice, but I can see it being pretty effective. Just massive heartbeat drone. has a pad fade underneath it. I've got my foot on the sustain pedal. Wow, okay. I mean, I, I could, you know, there's 4,000 patches in here. There's no way I'm going to be able to go through all of them. But it, I found them really inspiring. And there's, there's a real thickness and as well as some of these really complex and ambient patches, some of the, just the sort of straight analog kind of wave type stuff has got so much warmth and and burn to it. It sounds actually very authentic. I mean, for 99 euros, it's pretty hard to argue against this. I think the price may well be going up, also available for Windows and Linux. I think it's hard to argue against getting, you know, 4,000 plus patches, even if you don't do any synthesis, just flipping through the patches is going to get you there. But there's this is so deep, as you can see by all of the work done by the excellent sound designers. I mean, there is a ton. I, I didn't go over patches for everybody. I mean, there's just literally too much to go by. But I found it actually quite inspiring. And certainly coming out of the speakers, it has a really uh, impressive sound. Uh, there's just a stereo width to it as well. So if I do another pro, I'm going back into my just regular uh, Zebra 2 sounds, which will play in Zebra Hertz. So top tip, you folks, if you're going to go and favorite a load of stuff, favorite in Zebra Hertz because they'll stick. You can't actually, the tags you put in Zebra 2 don't come across in Zebra Hertz. So, okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, walkthrough of some of the patches. I mean, there are so many here. It's almost impossible for me to get everybody in. And there are a lot of other sound designers in this, this set of banks, 4,000 patches that I haven't even got around to. And that's one of the things that's actually quite interesting about this flipping through those patches you're not only getting you know a great synth with a great load of patches but you're getting the work of some of the world's premier finest past and present sound designers and you're seeing what they can do with a synthesizer that has this much capability and i think that's well worth keeping in mind this synthesizer does offer a huge broad palette of sounds whether it's just synth sounds whether it's more atmospheric sounds whether it's sound effects whether it's just loops or triggers or arpeggios it's all there there's a lot of it and it does sound really good zebra legacy is available now via the yuhi website priced at 99 euros and as i said i think it's actually a pretty good deal just 4,000 patches for 99 euros i mean you could spend that much on just patches for a synth and not by the synth. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. See you next time. I'll play you out with this rather pleasant Howard Scar light slide run patch. <laughs>